Let's touch on this editorial and why patients receiving glucocorticoids are among the highest risk patients during this pandemic. Yeah, so this is really important. So um, as endocrinologists, we see uh, patients who have both uh, underlying adrenal disease, Addison's disease, adrenal failure, uh, and also patients who have secondary adrenal insufficiency because of usually disorders of the pituitary gland. Um, so these are relatively rare conditions. By rare, I mean, you know, affecting less than five per 10,000 uh, patients in the background population. They're usually under the care of endocrinologists, uh, and, and, and we know about them. And um, the majority of these patients are well-educated. Uh, they're treated with physiological doses of rep replacement glucocorticoid. And just with any other intercurrent illness, they know to double their dose of glucocorticoid in the event of fever, um, um, or uh, in, in this case, uh, also other symptoms of COVID, particularly a continuous dry cough. Um, so, so that to me is a, is a less risky group because we know about those patients uh, and we anticipate that they will be uh, maintaining their usual sick uh, dose, you know, their, their sick daily rules. Obviously, if their condition deteriorate, deteriorates in any way, then they need to seek uh, urgent medical help because they may need parenteral steroids. The group that's slightly more worrying to us are the uh, patients who are treated uh, with pharmacological doses of glucocorticoid. And we estimate in the at-risk COVID group, this might be as much as 5% of that particular uh, patient population. As we know, these are patients who are taking uh, uh, pharmacological doses of glucocorticoid for underlying inflammatory conditions, be that inflammatory bowel disease, rheumatological conditions, polymyalgia, uh, and patients with asthma. And um, the studies that myself and my colleagues and others have been involved in have shown that up to 50% of those patients uh, have, a, have an impaired uh, adrenal response to stress. They don't mount a normal uh, physiological uh, cortisol response to uh, an infectious illness. And it's that group that we're particularly concerned about. So, so I think this is the, the, the really important issue, you know, and, and, it, and it's, it's potentially confusing because the WHO quite rightly have said that uh, glucocorticoids for the use of patients with COVID, particularly in the context of those developing ARDS, uh, that there's, there's no added benefit at all. In, in fact, if anything, uh, outcomes might be slightly worse. So, so none of us here, it's very important, we're not advocating glucocorticoid uh, therapy, parenteral glucocorticoids in that context. The exception to that are, are patients who have previously been exposed to uh, pharmacological doses of steroid, as I've said. And he's always simply trying to highlight in this editorial is, in, and I think it's a, it, it's a good take home message, is there should be no patient at all who falls into that group who's deteriorating on an intensive care unit who where intravenous uh, glucocorticoid therapy should not be considered. Not in a kind of therapeutic way, but simply to, uh, to replace the normal stress doses of steroid that any of us would would be uh, under in that situation. And, and, and that to me is the take home message. We, we really need to get that over as endocrinologists to our acute intensivist colleagues, always think of, uh, of glucocorticoid in that particular patient scenario.